we're going to talk about, you know, which is probably the most important one that affects our health and aging is the MTFHR, the methylin tetrahydrofolate gene. About 50% of the world's population have this gene mutation. And so what does it mean? That means, let me put it this way. Imagine, you know, I take the crude oil out of the ground and I put that in the gas tank in the car. The car can do nothing with it, right? Because it needs to be converted, refined to gasoline. Well, in the human body, it's the same thing. You know, all the raw materials in the body need to be converted. And that gene is responsible for converting our nutrients to its usable form so the body can actually use it. And <clears throat> if you have the gene mutation, um, you, if you're lucky, you only have, you know, one from your mom or from your dad, which is either the 677T or the A1298C. And if you're unlucky, you have both genes broken, you know, and then, yeah, you need to really change your diet and do something about your methylation. <clears throat> All right, so just to mention a few here, it's gonna blow your mind. <clears throat> so when you have the gene mutation and you cannot convert, the most, the most important nutrient for DNA methylation is methylfolate, right? But we have in our supplements, in our food supply, it's called enriched or fortified foods. We spray everything with folic acid. Now, folic acid is the synthetic form of methylfolate. You cannot find it anywhere in nature. It, it's made literally in the lab. And so if you don't have the mutation, you can easily convert it. You have the mutation, you cannot convert anything that's synthetic. So that's why when you consume supplements, you have to pay attention. Supplements are good, yes and no. Which means if you eat, if you consume supplements that are methylated or from a natural organic, you know, form, then it's okay. But when you, and most people don't pay attention, they just look at the price. But when you buy supplements that are cheaper, right? And they are synthetic, you cannot make the conversion. Now what happens is, as an example, <clears throat> you have an accumulation of folic acid in the body, which is bad. And then at the same time, you have nutrient deficiency because the body cannot you know, convert it. So I know you're thinking you're doing something good, but really you don't because you have all those missing ingredients. And how does it expresses itself in the human body? These are some of the most common health conditions, ADD, ADHD, chronic fatigue, Alzheimer, autism, faster aging, you're more prone to addiction, uh, pregnancy uh, loss, thyroid dysfunction, Down syndrome, Hashimoto, weight gain, diabetes, infertility, uh, headaches, um, cancer, migraines, high blood pressure, stroke, high homocysteine levels, depression. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. <clears throat> so that means when you have the gene mutation, you know, you probably have one or more of these issues. To put that in perspective, I had a client, uh, the kid was nine years old and got diagnosed with ADHD. And, um, she noticed that every morning when the kid was drinking orange juice or was eating, uh, you know, the cereal, you know, it, it turned to a wrestling match to get the kid in school. Uh, the kid was all over the place, couldn't concentrate. And so make a long story short, you know, they came to me and we did the test and sure enough, we had a broke, had the broken gene. So we had to remove all the fortified foods and uh, we had to give the kid all the supplements, you know, to support the methylation. And within two days, the kid improved. After two weeks, the kid got off the drugs, you know, and never really had, you know, this condition. The same, the same is autism. We have so many misdiagnoses, you know, in the United States, which is, which is insane. And uh, put this in perspective, <clears throat> that's what it all comes down to, it all comes down to profit. When, let's say you have an expensive, you know, rare plant at home, right? You paid thousands of dollars for the plant. And all of a sudden, your plant, you know, the leaves are turning brown and sagging and you see the plant is dying. You're like, oh my God, you know, and you're not a specialist, right? So what are you going to do? You call a specialist, a pathologist, right? Now they come, you know, they look at the leaves, the leaves are dying, right? Which is the symptom, right? Do you think they're going to go and, and try to rescue the leaf? Or do you think they're going to go down to the root cause, you know, and check the soil if there's nutrient deficiency? What do you think is going to happen? They're not paying attention to the leaf. They go right down to the soil, to the root cause. <clears throat> And once they identify, you know, the nutrient deficiency, and then they just add it, what happens? The leaf, the symptom turns green again. So that means, <laughs> that means that our plants 
have a better healthcare system in place than we humans. Because the way we, you know, attack any of these, we don't go down to the root cause, we just cover the symptom. Okay, you go to the doctor, if you're lucky, you get 15 or 20 minutes of your time, right? So you tell the doctor your symptoms and everything. The doctor is matching your symptoms with a health condition or disease, like a label, right? And once you, once you label your condition, then he's matching it with a drug and sends you home. Bye. That's it. And so <laughs> the funny part is, you know, it's just basically trying to, to you know, get the, the leaf from the, from the plant, you know, green again. But the root cause, the root cause issue is still there. Now there's, a few reasons why they don't do that. Number one is because it takes a long time. You know, if a client comes to me with a health issue, you know, and I start investigating, you know, it takes hours and hours. Doctors don't have the time. They don't get paid for that. You know, they get paid uh, 60 or 70 bucks for, for the visit and then for the prescription drug and then, you know, charge an insurance, you know, to make some extra money. If they would sit down at home after work, you know, and spend hours to see what is the root cause, what could happen with this person. They don't get paid for that, so why would they do that? So, so it's a sicker system, you know, really. <clears throat> and another, another example is with uh, autoimmune diseases. <clears throat> you know, so many people get misdiagnosed with autoimmune diseases, and especially, you know, when it comes to lupus and stuff. You know, I have uh, Caroline here, she can, you know, share uh, her story, because she had health issues for so long, and then, make a long story short, when we identified that she had the gene mutation and we changed her nutrition and supplementation. Caroline, why don't you want to share what happened? And that's another good example. Like the most common, the most common symptoms is ADD and ADHD. So let me explain how it, how it is. A healthy person, right? We don't think about this, but this is happening internally. You have a thought coming in and then you dismantle the thought. Next thought is coming in, dismantle the thought and so on. So you can carry a conversation. You can focus and remember things, right? But when you have the gene mutation, your brain works like this. Thought comes in, can't dismantle it. Next thought comes in, can't dismantle it. And now you have like 10 thoughts. You know, you're talking to a friend of yours and uh, you look at this jacket and you, the, the logo reminds you, oh, I'm supposed to take a vacation. And your friend goes, oh, I forgot to tell you, you know, my grandma died. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So you're like totally off. And that's exactly what happens with the kids, right? They, they, they can't focus 
are in school and then to put them on Adderall or Ritalin. So what's happening is, you know, they want to increase your nervous system to keep up with the fast pace of your brain. So that's why they give you amphetamines. But really what you're supposed to do is just calm everything down, not raising everything. And that's exactly, and it could be something. <laughs> You'll be surprised how many times we've identified the MTFHR gene mutation and, you know, and all those you know, health conditions disappear. Like, you'd be surprised. I, I've seen transformations, mind-blowing. Like, people, like, suffer from stuff like that for uh, all their life, you know. And they're taking drugs and nothing works. They're just covering the symptoms. Remember, the leaf, right? Uh, but the root cause, going down the root cause, would be investigating if you have the gene mutation. And you can do a simple test to find out. And if anybody's interested with the testing, uh, work with uh, 10x off. All right, so I want to emphasize, you know, demethylation again, because it's so important. We, we don't talk about this stuff, especially not in healthcare. So methylation is basically, you know, remember with, okay, let me explain this. The methylation in the body is like a traffic light, right? Let's say you have like millions of traffic lights in the body to regulate the traffic, right? So if the traffic light is working, you know, it can smoothly, you know, regulate everything and everything is working. But what happens when the traffic light is dysfunction? You know, now, you know, each car has to stop at the intersection, you know, and let him go and let him go and everything slows down. Worst case scenario, what if green comes on, you know, on both sides, boom, now everything is crashing. And that's what's happening in our body. And so those traffic lights, you know, control which genes have to turn on and off, building and repairing DNA and RNA. It also slows down the aging process when everything is running smooth. And it reduces the risk of heart attack and stroke by 75%. And we bombard ourselves, you know, with medication. And then it balances your homocysteine levels, which by the way is a great indicator if you do a blood test and you constantly have elevated homocysteine level, then you most likely have the gene mutation. Uh, also helps with uh, maintaining good mental health, processes hormones, detoxifies the chemicals and heavy metals, also from the brain, uh, fighting infection, building immune cells, and also you know balances your histamine. So that's why when you have like allergies, you know, a lot and you know, heavy weight, there could be nothing else than methylation. And you ask yourself, oh, I moved to this city, all of a sudden I have this and I have that, right? Well, to some degree it is true, but if it's something you uh, had all your life and you can't get rid of it, then you have to check your, you know, uh, methylation. And then it supports neurotransmitters to prevent depression, anxiety, and mental health disorders. You know, that's like, you know, like your brain is really heavily get affected by that when you know your genes are not turning on and off if that's not regulated uh, and yeah and of course the most important is it works with vitamins minerals and essential fatty acids so i gotta emphasize that here the body needs raw materials to function in the same way that the car or anything you know we anything with an engine right needs the right liquids the light ingredients to function you know we take care of our cars better than our human body so how do you expect that all this in the body is working, all the traffic lights are regulating your traffic, if you don't give the body the raw materials? And we're going to talk about this more in detail, like what kind of materials. All right, so imagine everything we just talked about, you know, the methylation. These tiny balls, those methyl groups control, you know, the entire methylation process. All right, so what can interfere? with your uh, methylation. Environmental factors, uh, pollutants, which you live in a big city like Phoenix, you know, it's perfect for that. Uh, chemical toxins, you know, which we have on a food supply and a, cl a cleaning supply. Uh, pesticides, okay, let me say pesticides. <laughs> uh, not too long ago, I was reading a new study about berries, non-organic berries. They wanted to see how much pesticides and insecticides is in there. So when they squeezed the juice and they investigated the juice, there was so much pesticides in there, they could take the same juice and respray the crop. And that's what we consume every single day. And we know that uh, glyphosate is causing cancer. So now you, I mean, and that's why I don't touch anything if it's not organic, especially berries. When it comes to fruits, right, they, 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 the, the, the skin is like a sponge. Everything goes in the inside and we consume that. And then we have, you already talked about the genetic mutations, such as the MTFHR and some associated uh, uh, gene mutations. And then nutrition, nutritional you know, problems, uh, which we're gonna go into in a little bit. 
that could be a lecture on its own, there's so much to talk about. Then stress like mental and physical. And then medications, antacids. Anybody taking antacid medications here, on and off? Nobody? No heartburn, nothing? Wow, that's impressive. All right, so antacid medication, you know, interferes with methylation, but also when you constantly have heartburn, right, you think that uh, you have a lot of stomach acid, but it's actually quite the opposite. When, when you have low stomach acid, for the most part, you don't even reach the acidity that's needed to close the esophagus lid, right? So you have, here's the stomach acid, you know, food comes in, it starts on boiling, but the liquid is so low that the uh, esophagus doesn't even get the signal to close. And for the most part, the acidity is off too. Now you're digesting the food, you know, and the, the stomach acid is, you know, splashing up your throat. And that's what you feel, you know, as, you know, heartburn. And the only way to fix that is, you know, is to increase your stomach acid. So the problem is, you know, we take an anti-acid, which kills the stomach acid even more. So you're actually adding to the problem and you will never get out of there. And then that can cause nutrient deficiency in everything. If anybody ever has seen undigested food in their bowel, you know, in their poop, that's a, that's a serious, a serious issue. And then there's methodextrate, which is a drug that's, you know, used for cancer. And then metformin, which is a diabetes drug. Yeah, that one actually is part of the longevity uh, drug also. That one actually has unbelievable, unbelievable benefits. However, like the yin and yang, you know, everything has to be in perfect balance and you have too much. Nitric oxides and then the uh, interceptants, which is like, you know, pills for infections. Yeah, and so, yeah, they reduced hydrochloric acid, which we just explained. And then also, um, the aging itself, depending on how you treat your body, you know, will also, you know, affect, you know, the methylation. And then, of course, diet, alcohol, and drugs. All right, let's get back to folic acid, because I think that's important. So, we already identified when you have that MTFHR mutation, you have nutrient deficiency because you cannot convert, you know, some of those uh, important nutrients for DNA methylation. So, we already know now how important the DNA methylation is. All right, so now you're like, oh, okay, well, I just, you know, take some supplements, you know, to replace it. But now you don't know there's a difference between folic acid and methylfolate. Now, most people just go for the price, right, and just get the cheaper crap. And then you consume folic acid. So what happens? So if you consume, you know, folic acid supplements, uh, studies have shown whether you have the gene mutation or not, it causes cancer. You increase this, you know, the uh, cancer, especially uh, prostate cancer. And you can find that in all the you know, processed foods, multivitamins, some of the energy drinks, uh, even some of the protein powders, you know, you'd be surprised. All right, so, and now, that is the biggest issue here in the United States. We spray folic acid on our freaking food supply. Let me give you the history. It started in 1933, you know, after the, the World War. And maybe back then they had, uh, I don't know, maybe it was for good faith because people were suffering, they had nutrient deficiency and everything, and they know that folic acid, or methylfolate, is one of the most important uh, nutrients for the human body, for DNA methylation, you know, the traffic light. And so they decided to spray, you know, our entire food supply with that. If you consume this stuff, you get exposed to that every day. And remember, there's a 50-50 chance that you might have the mutation. And if you do, and you have some of those health issues we talked about, and you go to the doctor, you know, they just take care of the leaf to cover the symptom. So they not, never go down the route. Well, let me, there are some doctors, they take the time, sure. But I'm talking about mainstream and the majority. And so if you eat breakfast cereals, bread, you know, uh, rice, now we're talking about white rice. However, if it's organic, they're not sprayed with folic acid. Or let's say they shouldn't be. And so margarine, salt, snack bar, juices, baby formula. Now imagine, you know, your baby has the gene mutation, right? Uh, and, the, and you feed the, the baby with the baby formula, right? That baby already gets bombarded with, with health issues with folic acid before it's, before it's even like grown up. And now, and, and then the babies have like health issues, you know, uh, skin issues. I've seen like one of my neighbors, you know, that baby has extreme, you know, kin, uh, skin issues but they're too stubborn, you know, to look at it from a different point of view. You know, they only listen to the doctor. And then also, you know, edible oils, margarine, and uh, meat alternatives. Okay, so this is, you know, how you 
mess up your health and your methylation with fortified foods. Now, I say it again, if you don't have that mutation, it's okay, you can convert it. But again, why, eat it? why, why even exposing yourself to something that's made in the lab if you can have, for the same price, the methylated form?